Welcome to Barefoot February, where we're gonna cut apart lots of anatomical footwear all through February, but we had to start with boots. So I've got five anatomical barefoot boots, well, three plus a couple of mainstream alternatives to really answer a lot of the barefoot boot questions. What is a barefoot boot? Why would somebody consider buying a barefoot boot? And how do they compare to the mainstream alternatives? And most importantly, how do they rank on the WPS scale from clown all the way up to cool? So we're gonna run through our tests, cut them in half, and really see what's what in the barefoot hiking world. And I'm super excited about this series because as much as you might think that I'm a all in on the high arch Pacific Northwest boots, one of my most worn boots is a pair of Limbs barefoot hiking boots that we've done a couple videos on. And I wear those just as much, if not more than any other boot. And for athletics and working out, I like a, a barefoot style shoe with a little bit more cushioning than an average barefoot boot. And so it's really interesting to me so that we can start rounding out this whole boot and shoe world with all the barefoot stuff, comparing it to what's coming up in March, Arch March, where we're gonna do the complete opposite and see what's what comparing the two and see if you get more benefits from high arch, more benefits from barefoot boots or shoes, a combination of the both. Is everyone right? Is everyone wrong? That's what we're trying to answer over the next couple months. So why would somebody want a barefoot boot? Well, the alleged benefits are foot health. So your foot in the really narrow toe box boots, squish your toes together, can give you plantar fasciitis and just doesn't allow your feet to grow the muscles it needs to and strengthen in the way that our ancestors did before real boots and shoes were invented. Ground feel. So a lot of people like to be able to feel what's underneath their foot when they're hiking and walking. They want to strengthen their feet in that way instead of relying on the rigidity of their boots. And allegedly it has a lot of benefits for better posture because conventional shoes with the heel to toe drop put your body out of alignment causing back pain, knee pain, leg pain, which are the exact same things that the high arch boots guys say. So that's why this the, this two part series of Barefoot February and Arch March are gonna be really interesting because they both have the exact same claims and claim the other one is completely wrong. So that's what's half of what's got me excited about this series. And to make this as clear as possible and, and easy as possible, we kind of have to define the terminology so that you know what we're talking about over the next couple months. So first, what does anatomical mean and, and how does that relate to a wide toe box? Well, they're essentially the same thing, at least for the purpose of this video, where it has the shape of a foot and not the shape of a pointy dress shoe. That's an, a wide toe box or an anatomical toe box or shape. Zero drop means it leaves your feet on a flat surface, the heel and the ball your foot are all the same height regardless of what how many layers are underneath your foot and ground fill we, it's pretty self-explanatory it's what we already talked about with being able to fill everything underneath your foot as much as possible while still being safe. And then finally, barefoot is kind of a all those different terms put together. So it needs to have a wide toe box, it needs to have ground fill, and it needs to be zero drop to be considered a barefoot boot or shoe in most people's opinion. So now let's go over the contenders of this series, starting with the Zeros. It's the brand is Zero. The style is the Excursion Fusion. They weigh 14.6 ounces. They retail for $149. They're made in China. And the materials it's made of is is a mesh fabric with a TPU overlays, foam collar, and does it check all the barefoot attributes? Wide toe box, yes. Zero drop, yes. Flat feel, it's 18 millimeters from the ground. So it has all three of those barefoot attributes, so it's considered a barefoot boot. It's construction <laughs> constructed with the cemented construction, and the way that this brand positions this boot is a fully waterproof hiking boot that was ready for extreme adventure. The next contender is the brand is Freak Barefoot. The style is a Tundra. They weigh 13.4 ounces. They retail for $165, and they're made in China. And the materials this is made of is the most convincing fake leather I've ever seen. I was convinced it was real leather because the cross section looks like real leather. I just thought it was a cheaper real leather, but we burned it and it just completely melted, so it's not real leather. What about the barefoot attributes? Wide toe box, yes. Zero drop, yes. And ground fill, it's 14.5 millimeters from the ground, so tons of ground fill. So this checks all those boxes to be a true barefoot boot. As for the construction, this one's cemented as well, and the way that the brand positions this boot is an all year round microfiber barefoot boot suitable for hiking both on and off the trail as well as casual use. Next up is the brand is Vivo Barefoot. The style is a Tracker Decon FG2. They weigh 15.8 ounces. They retail at the highest price of all these boots at $230 and they're made in Vietnam. And the upper material is actually the only one that has leather. So as being a leather expert, I'm glad we at least have one because there's a, there's this weird interplay with a lot of people that like barefoot boots also really hate leather and want a really environmentally friendly things. They go hand in hand for some reason. So not a lot of leather in the barefoot world, but this is a new buck leather. It's right around two millimeters thick. It still has plenty of grain. There's no fake plastic coating on top and no fake 
print embossed into it aside from the little details they have here. So overall, a pretty solid leather, especially for a, a barefoot boot that most barefoot companies hate leather for whatever reason. As for the barefoot attributes, wide toe box, yes. Zero drop, yes. Ground fill, it's at 13 millimeters. So the thinnest outsole and midsole insole combination out of all the boots. So this is clearly a, a barefoot boot. But the construction is really what's interesting about this because it's cemented and sidewall stitched. So you get all the durability of the cemented construction, but you don't have the potential downfalls of cemented construction splitting and delaminating because that stitch that goes all the way around the boot locks that outsole to the upper, making this the only real sewn construction out of all these boots in the lineup. And the way that the brand positions this boot is feel the wild and protect the wild. Like I was saying about like the leather and the eco-friendly stuff goes hand in hand. Not that it's a bad thing, it's just kind of a unique trend. And they say the outsole gives improved multi-terrain grip and the upper made of Woolmark wool and wild hide leather brings extra flex, hike free. Next to some of our more mainstream, less barefoot, boots. This brand is the Topo Athletic. The style is a Trail Venture 2. They weigh 15.4 ounces. They retail for $160 and they're made in China. And the materials this is made of is very similar, a mesh material with TP lay, TPU overlays. For the barefoot attributes, wide toe box, definitely yes. This thing is ridiculous. Zero drop, not really, because they say that the heel is 33 millimeters and the ball of the foot is 28 millimeters, so it's technically a five millimeter drop. So because of that, there's not much ground fill and it's not technically a zero drop. So this would not be considered a true barefoot boot. The construction of this boot is a cemented and direct injected construction that you see from a lot more of the big mainstream brands that can afford to do direct injected, have all the molds instead of piecing them together with individual components like you see in more of these smaller boutique style brands. And the way that the brand positions this boot is the Trail Venture 2 is a perfect mountain boot for day hikes or backpacking. And finally, to the last contender of the series, the brand is Keen. The style is the Nexus Evo Mid WP. They weigh just over a pound. They retail for $190. They're made in Vietnam, and the upper is also made of mesh and TPU. And as for the barefoot attributes, obviously that, that popular Keen wide toe box, it is not zero drop because it's an eight millimeter drop, at least they say on their website, because the heel is 32 millimeters high and the ball of your foot is 24 millimeters high. So not technically a barefoot boot, it just has the wide toe box. And the construction is the same as the Topo, it's direct injected and cemented. And the way that Keen positions this product is we took the room for your toes comfort, protection and stability of our iconic hiker and gave it a running shoe feel with a waterproof engineered knit upper and all-terrain tread. So now let's see how these boots actually compare to each other with maybe one of the most important things if you're watching this video, how wide are they? Which is the widest and which is the skinniest? Well, the easiest way to tell this is just pull out the insoles because you could look visually at it, but they have bumpers on the toes. They have wider widths. Some of the other boots that we're gonna do have welts and stuff. So it's a really hard thing to judge just from the outside. But the insole has the exact outline of exactly where your foot's gonna go. So if we rank these from widest to skinniest, free just edges out the widest. Then it goes to the Vivo barefoot. Then it's surprisingly, it goes to the mainstream Topo because this thing is thick and wide. And then it goes to the zeros and then finally to the Keen at the narrowest. But to put that in perspective, just so you can see how wide the Keens are, even though they are the most narrow, if I line this up, there's only a quarter inch difference between the Keen at the narrowest and the Free at the widest. So the all are super wide just very slight differences. Now to the next test, which is a huge question I had because they're so zero drop and thin outsoles. My fear was like, if I'm actually hiking in these and like some really rugged terrain, if I step on a sharp rock, is it gonna just go straight through the outsole and ruin my 150 to $230 shoes? Well, we did the puncture test to see how puncture resistant they actually are. And we ran it on every single one and we'd rank them from least puncture resistant to most puncture resistant. And the least puncture resistant was the Vivo Barefoot at 43.5 pounds, next to the Freet at 54.5. Keen surprisingly came in third at 57.5. Topo came in next at 62.5. And Zero, the real surprise for me, at least for the puncture resi resistance, came in at 66 pounds. So they're all within the same relative range. You know, we don't have one up in the 350 pounds puncture like you see in Pacific Northwest. And they're all surprisingly puncturable. You know, 50 pounds is not a lot to puncture through, but honestly, you'll probably be fine in any of these boots unless you're stepping on nails. Next to the flexibility test, because this is a huge part of the barefoot world is 
The idea is the more flexible and the more natural the, the boot bends and flexes and rolls, the more it's gonna strengthen your feet and the more you have to rely on your feet rather than the rigidity of your boot or the structure and the shank and all the different attributes that you see in most hiking boots, especially like the really rigid mountaineering boots. So the, it's hard to test this. So the best way we came up with was two tests, a roll test like you see in all the advertisements of all these shoes. And then we also did a heel to toe test, not this way, but this way, just to give us an idea of how flexible this really is. And so we flexed every single one and Vivo came in at the most flexible because this thing is just ridiculous. The next was the Freet, just a little bit more rigid. I think the, the sidewalls made it a little more rigid. Then to the zeros, which really step up in the rigidity because the previous two are really, really flexible. You really don't get any support in the flex but the zeros do give you just a little bit more support, especially this type of flex. Then out of the two more mainstreams, the Keens were the most flexible from there. And you know, you can still bend it in half this way. It's a little bit of a struggle, but you can do it. The Topos on the other hand are the most rigid. You know, there are a lot more of the rigidity you see in like a running shoe or a, a light hiking boot and you can't really bend it the other way. But that flexibility has its pros and cons, especially when you start wearing these, you gotta be careful because your Achilles tendon and all the tendons on the bottom of your foot near the arch, you'll overstrain them. So if you get a pair of these, take it easy, just go slowly, take a few weeks to really get your feet warmed up to them. Finally, to the last thing I wanna go over, which is to me the most important, and it's really the hike ability and the hike rating that you can do in these, these boots, because they're all hiking boots, but hiking is, a very subjective term, you know, especially after we started digging into the Alden Indy deal. A lot of people are like, oh, what are you talking about? Those, those things are so grippy. And I'm like, we have two completely different ideas of what grippy means. So we finally decided to start defining what different types of hikes. So right now we have a class one, class two, class three hikes. And I believe this is a fairly standard thing across the hiking community. So class one is basically flat, very groomed, mostly dirt, very little rocks, and you can just take any shoe on there and you don't really, you can just be on your feet the whole time. A class two has some elevation change, mostly groomed trail, uh, some dirt and some loose rocks, and you can still do it in most footwear and you, can, you don't really need your hands, you don't really need ropes or anything, it's a feet only trail but it's a little bit more difficult than a class one. But it's really more of a true hike and less of a trail walk. And then to class three, and there is class four and five, but for most people's purposes, class three is about as, good, as difficult as you get. So it's really steep, really rocky, not really groomed trails. It's more of like game trails and cattle trails, lots of loose rock and shale and, and limestone. And occasionally you're gonna need your hands and feet to scramble up certain things. And you're not gonna wanna wear very light, loose, uh, what would you call it, non-durable or vulnerable footwear on this type of class three trail. So that's your classification. So how do these boots actually rank? Well, we'll rank them once again from lightest hikes up to the most rugged hikes. So the maybe the lightest hikes is the free. This is really a class one only. It's just so light and flexible and there's not much underneath your foot. Anything more than a class one, you're gonna be in a lot of pain unless you're just going for the pain and the experience of feeling every rock underneath your foot, stick to class one. Next, the Vivos are really a class one boot with some light class two hikes. You could still get around in these. They're pretty luggy, they're pretty durable, they're high quality materials. So you could do class two, but you're gonna pay for it if you do. They're, they're, unless your feet are really conditioned, it's, it's really a class one boot that you could do class two in. Next to the Zeros, this is where you start to step up in actual hike ability. So you could do class one super easy and you could do most class twos but once again, you're gonna feel it underfoot. After a long class two hike, you're gonna have a little bit more support, but because of all the loose rocks and the uneven terrain, your feet are probably gonna take a little beating with these as well. Then if we go to the topos, so this is where you step into the more of the real hiking boots, in real in quotations, where you can do class one and two pretty easily. But for class three, with all this foam, they're a little bit too unstable, you're gonna roll. And more importantly, a class three hike is gonna eat these boots alive. There's just too much vulnerability in these boots. And then to the most rugged hike ready, the Keens, class one and two, pretty easy. But similar thing with the class three, it's, they're just not a class three hiking boot. These things are gonna get eaten up by the trail. They're gonna be comfortable and they're a little bit more grippy and more rugged than the Topos, but not by a whole lot. This is mostly a, a class two hiking boot, unless you're really wanting to roll an ankle on a class three. So 
that's how they stack up. That's all the preliminary information. So now let's cut these things in half, see what's hiding on the inside and how they all get to this really thin outsole and rank these boots on which is the most barefoot, which is the most durable and which is the most clown and which is the most cool. So let's cut them in half. All right, we got them all chopped in half eventually. It's been a lot of moving different boots and things around during the planning of this video. So let's see what's inside. Despite killing the bandsaw blade, the Keen completely destroyed the, that blade. It, I don't know if it got caught and the weld broke, but whatever. So now we can finally see how thick these really are. So from thinnest up to thickest. The, the Vivos are spot on at 13. The Freet were correct at 14.5. The Zeros were also spot on at 18. The Keens were 32 at the heel, 24 at the toe. And the Topos are 33 at the heel and 28 at the toe. So now let's rank these from least barefoot all the way up to most barefoot. Which one balances the wide toe box, the anatomical shape, the zero drop, the ground fill, the flexibility, which balances all those the best to make the most barefoot boot? Well, from the worst, we're gonna, we gotta rank the topos as the worst barefoot because really it's just so thick and foamy that the toe box is the only thing keeping it in the barefoot category for this video. Next, obviously the Keens for obvious reasons. And then to the three that are actually barefoot shoes and boots. The zeros out of the three are the least barefoot of the barefoots because they're more rigid, they not quite as wide. Above that, the number two spot is the Freets. They, they're they just about as barefoot as the, the Vivos, but they're just not quite as flexible. They're not quite, they're not done quite as well as the Vivos, putting the Vivos at the number one spot. And I think these balance all the attributes and what people are looking for in a barefoot shoe and boot, but obviously they're the most expensive, so keep that in mind. But I just really like the leather. I like the wool. I like how flexible they are. I like that you still have heavy lugs and there's a lot of technology still in this shoe for a very boutique style or a very niche market. It, it does it really, really well. But what about the durability? Because that matters almost more than anything because you, these aren't that cheap of shoes and if they wear out super quick, it's a lot of money going down the drain for your feet just to hurt at the end of the day. So least durable, we gotta go with the Freets. They're, they're, they're just cemented, they're, they're fake leather. The outsole's really thin compared to like a regular boot. They're not crazy thin for a barefoot boot. The next above that and least durable would be the Zeros. Similar story, just not quite as durable with the synthetic upper, but more durable than the Freets. Then above that, we gotta go with the Topos. Because of how much foam there is on the outside and how much foam can compress, I would consider this less durable, just to how much is exposed and how thin the outsole actually is. But I feel like you could make a case to put these in different orders based on how you hike and what you do in them. And then above that, I'd put the next most durable is the Vivo Barefoots, I, I, foot, feet, Vivo, Vivo Bare Feet, I don't know. Um, I think out of the barefoot boots, it's the most durable. It has that sidewall stitch. It has real leather. It has wool. It has all the properties that I love about wool. It has a counter cover. And honestly, more than anything, that stitching on the sidewall is a huge attribute for this boot to make it really, really durable. And I, I might've put it above Keen's, except for Keen has the long history of durable work boots and constructions and the, and the ability to make boots at such a big scale that they can guarantee they're as durable as possible versus some of these smaller brands, you just end up with a lot more mistakes. So you could make an argument either way for the top three. And I really wanted to put Vivo at the top, but if I'm really setting my excitement and hype aside about barefoot boots, I think the Keens are more durable. And then to maybe the most important ranking of this entire video, 
the MPS ranking or the clown to cool uh, ranking. We have varying degrees of all starting at clown to duck to double wide surprise to cool. So what do I mean by clown? Well, I would feel like a clown wearing them. They have the very clownish shape to them and the function and the benefit of a barefoot shoe is prioritized way above form. Form isn't even a consideration for a, a clown shoe in my opinion. Next duck, I would feel a little bit of like a duck, but not necessarily in a bad way, kind of like in the duck feet way where it's almost like a style to have a wide toe box and function informs the form, but in a good way. And then to the double wide surprise of the DWS. So they're not obviously wide, but there's something different about them. And it just kind of catches your eye. Like those are a different pair of boots or shoes, but they balance the form and function really well in a way that that is appeasing and aesthetic to your eye. I don't really know how to put it. Like they look different, but in a good way and a way that I wouldn't feel embarrassed to wear is what I'm getting at. And then finally to cool, they mostly look normal and I would wear them for their look first and their functions, functions second. You know, not necessarily putting them in that order, but I, I wouldn't feel any weirdness at all wearing them and I would like to wear them because of how they look and because of how they function. So how do these boots rank on that scale? Well, starting with the way that we introduce them, the zeros I would put as a DWS, they're pretty normal looking. They just look like a hiking shoe. So they're not, they're not very good looking for anything except for a hiking boot, but they don't look that different than a regular hiking boot. Next to the freets, the freets I would put kind of in that duck category. I feel a little bit goofy wearing them and they look a little bit goofy, but they're not crazy. Then to the Vivo barefoot. So this is one where it's kind of on the edge of a double wide surprise and a cool looking boot. Cause I really like the look of these. And I think when we've people have worn around the shop and I've worn them, I like the look of them. They're really unique, but they are just a little bit goofy with how wide they are. But I don't think anyone really noticed to be fair. So they're right on the edge of, of double wide surprise. Cool. Then next to the, the topo, these are close to a clown shoe just because of how ridiculous this, this wide toe box is, but I'm going to put them as duck because it, they're just kind of chunky and the paneling is interesting and they're not quite as clownish as some of, we've got a, some really clownish shoes coming up. So for this video, without the context of those future videos, I'm gonna put that as a duck category. And then finally to the Keens, a double wide surprise for the Keen because people are used to the look of Keens. They do really good at hiding the wide toe with the bumpers and the paneling. And it's just overall not quite as wide generally. And people are, like I said, people know Keens are wide. And so when they see you wearing a Keen, they're just like, oh, he's wearing a pair of Keens. So a double wide surprise, getting close to that cool category, given the specific Keen that you're wearing. These ones aren't cool to me, but there's some, there's some decent looking Keen boots. So overall, which would I choose if I were to choose one boot to hike in as my barefoot hiking boot? No surprise, I'd choose the Vivo. It's the best looking, it's the most barefoot. It's really durable, especially compared to the other barefoot ones. The best materials, and they're by, but they are by far the most expensive. So Freets are a really good, more affordable alternatives to the, the Vivos. So if you're trying to break into the, this market or this category of footwear and you're not willing to spend over 200 bucks, the Freets are a nice, affordable alternative. And the zeros are the most understated. They look the most like a hiking boot and they'd be the easiest for a first step into the barefoot world because they're a little bit thicker. They're, they don't look quite as crazy and they're, they, they aren't quite as barefoot as the other two. And we've also shown you a couple alternatives. If you're not ready to commit to the barefoot world at all, but you want that wide toe box and you want to start easing your way into the, to the barefoot world, you have the lower drop in the heel and the wide toe box in the Keens, and you have this ridiculously wide toe box in the Topos. It's still not a crazy drop, but out of the two of them, which one would I go for if I were to break into the, the barefoot market, I'd probably just go with the Keens. They're a little bit better looking, not quite as crazy, a reputable brand. And they're around the same price and they just, they don't look quite as ridiculous as the Topos. So let me know what you guys think and if we covered everything you want to know about this style of boot and then this style of video. And we've covered the Limbs Boulder Boot hiking boots before, so check out those videos for more barefoot content if you don't wanna wait until Saturday for the next barefoot episode because we got some really cool stuff planned. We have, we have some barefoot tactical boots on the way, some barefoot sneakers and shoes, barefoot sandals, and some barefoot athletic shoes that I'm really interested in because like I mentioned, I like when I'm working out on athletic stuff, I hate having my toes squished more than anything. So it's gonna be a really cool couple months and I'm really excited to really dive into this and start answering some of those old, those age old questions of what's better, arch support, no arch support, strong feet, weak feet, all this stuff we're hoping to answer with as much 
objective information as possible with some seasoning of subjectivity. So thank you guys for all your support. It's your support that allows us to buy $1,000 worth of barefoot boots in the hopes that we make our money back by doing these videos. So thank you guys so much. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because that's the only thing sponsors care about. And likes and comments, all that stuff is great too, but mostly subscribe. So thank you guys. See ya. One, two, one, 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 two.